the Kronos Quartet is celebrating its 50th anniversary. Happy anniversary, Kronos Quartet. We commissioned composers, and the pieces that we've commissioned our ours and we put them online for free. 50 for the Future represents the state of the music that is written for string quartet at this moment in time. The project at the Amsterdam Musikgebouw is just going to be one weekend long party and immersion in the string quartet music of today. For the first time we're going to be showcasing the whole 50 pieces, everything will be played, every composer. I think this festival is one of the most ambitious that I've heard of in terms of where the music comes from. They're the most legendary quartet that exists uh, today. I mean, they've, they've broken so much ground in so many ways. I'm constantly inspired by what they've done. It used to be that being in a string quartet meant you had to do one thing, and I think because of them, there are no limits anymore on what a string quartet can and should do. They set a whole new universe of what is possible for a string quartet, just in, in every possible way, and it's, I think, hugely influential to all of us. They are really like childhood heroes and pioneers, at least for me and us. What they created, what they how they opened the, the genre of string quartet is just amazing. What I find amazing is the contact with Kronos is always very warm when we see them, when they come here. David reads our newsletters and then <laughs> yes. sends us an email what he likes about them. They make us feel like we're all equal, we're all colleagues and we all want the same thing and that's share music. Growing up, when I was approaching classical music, it was from a pretty conservative perspective. I mean, I, I wanted to really play, get to know the Beethoven quartets, and I wanted to make sure I knew, you know, all the good Mozart quartets, and I wanted to like be a really like great classical quartet player. Even when I was inundated in this conservative classical music training, Kronos Quartet was always there. And I feel like it, you could almost make a joke out of the fact that like anytime you have a good idea as a quartet, Kronos Quartet's already done it. Whether it's working with like, you know, incredible Inuit throat singers from North America, or whether it's Philip Glass music or Jimi Hendrix arrangements, it's incredible what they've accomplished. There's no reason why it, it, it shouldn't be that Kronos Quartet are basically household names in any musical household. What's special to me is that they're not just a new music quartet, but they're a, an American new music quartet. In a way, like without the Kronos Quartet, there is no Atomic Quartet. They really paved the way for what it meant to be a, like a truly American string quartet, which didn't really have that much of a definition because even like the Guarneri Quartet, they felt like an international quartet. So now in the 21st century, being an American quartet that plays a lot of American contemporary music. They really paved the way for us to be taken seriously and have our own sort of universe, I think. They bring so much experience, so much kind of vitality to music making where I just feel like I can give them anything and they will look and find something joyful and beautiful in there to bring out and share with people. I think that level of trust helps me compose. It helps me feel like I can refine something to its utmost or leave it as just almost like unmolded clay. And they have a way of turning that into something that's very theirs. I really like pushing instruments farther than I feel like they've gone. And they've been incredibly open to really bringing those pieces of sound and vocabulary that I've developed on my own instruments, really bring it into their music making and their performance. When the pandemic started, they reached out asking if I could write something for them so that they could play together while not being physically present in the same space. So this was around May of 2020, and we were early in the pandemic and everyone was in their home. They were trying to rehearse and then thought of, what if we, instead of 
trying to solve this and trying to do it as if we were together in the same room, what if we embrace the fact that we're actually not together in the same room? So we had to think of a new way of them playing, which for this meant um, that it was more gestural and they were responding to each other, listening to a gesture and then responding to that gesture or stacking on top of each other. And so there's a lot of call and response that happens and it's by design and by the nature of the platform. I think the first Kronos Quartet recording that I interacted with was, I think it was called Lacrime Antique. You know this recording? Mm -hmm. Man, it was just like, wait, Quartet could do that? And there's all this funky stuff, and like you would listen to it, uh, and you could, you, you, at some point, is this a piece from the 12th century, or is this, was this Harry Parch? Like, what is, mm -hmm. what's going on, you know? You have the great composers writing for these four instruments, and so to see them work with people from just all over the world, but also all of different diff disciplines, like Yoko Hussein, or mm -hmm. some of these people who are coming, who are, as famous, if not more famous in their own disciplines, coming together yeah. and being open to this sort of Western art form and, right. and having a conversation. I mean, they've, I think they've been extraordinarily pioneering in that, in that respect. Kronos is very versed <laughs> in a lot of uh, different idioms and styles of music. That's a good thing about them because you see, they knew when they, I think they knew that I was going, what I wrote from, that was going to be required for them to improvise. So it's a, lot of, it's a lot of improvisation in that music. So they were already prepared to do that. And they have done this in the past, I'm sure, with other composers. So that kind of challenge, it's exciting for them too, because there's different ways to, impro there's different ways to improvise and there's different uh, uh, formalities and guidelines for improvisation too, you know. And so they were, they were very interested in the way the that I laid out the process of improvisation for them. I am just so happy to be able to learn from them and write music for them at such a, a point in their career where it feels like they have such a, a strong sense of themselves, such a strong sense of what they want to give to the world, to music. They don't sink in their tradition of being a string quartet. They just keep, keep on 50 years? They, 50 so, yeah. years already, yeah, and they just keep on being the, the most adventurous string quartet of the world, so it's, it's quite inspiring. I immediately noticed like his eyes were, there were sparks and there was this small fire going on of of playing instruments and he just started three months ago. The Kronos Quartet is now existing for 50 years and we've been doing 10 years of quartet, but it would be really nice that when we have been doing 50 years of quartet that we can give these pieces along to the next generation.